That's not a Jedi thing, the Jedi say. Hello everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is James, thanks for stopping by. If you like Star Wars, Skeleton Crew, and more, hit that subscribe button, because we talk about it all the time on this channel. I love Star Wars, grew up with it. Obviously, look at me, I'm old, but I did grow up with Star Wars, and I am so happy about Skeleton Crew and how good those first two episodes were. I thought it was back to an adventure, a kid-friendly, fun adventure, which isn't to say that's all I want from Star Wars, not at all, but I thought, you know what, Star Wars was in such a deep, dark place going into it that it needed kind of like a reset button to be pressed, like a refresh going on, and this is kind of what this is. This is like, hey, back to the roots. They brought back Teak, they brought Teak in, they had puppets, they had Phil Tippett in, you felt it, you felt Brutus in there, you know, doing what he does. Uh, and the kids were great. I thought the kids were great. The characters of the kids also remind well, they they were taken right or plucked right out of an '80s adventure, and and I loved it. But the one character actor that I was very very excited to see got very little uh, screen time whatsoever, and that was Jude Law. I was really hoping to see a lot of Jude Law, and we saw uh, basically none of of Jude Law. We basically got absolutely nothing. Of Jude Law. Now, I, obviously, I think this is up for debate. I don't know why, but the first pirate we meet, or the, the captain of the ship, is Jude Law, and then there's a mutiny on him because he takes him to treasure, and of course, there is no treasure, I should say. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen the first two episodes of Skeleton Crew. If you haven't, hit the pause button, go watch it, come back 76 minutes, we'll talk about it then. It's a lot of fun, trust me. If you're looking for like lore breaking things like that, you're not going to get it, but world building, this had way more world building than I anticipated this show, the first two episodes anyway did. And I can only do this video, and my opinion of it based on the first two episodes, it might go all downhill from here, we don't know. But right now, I'm all in. I'm like, this is a lot of fun. Is it perfect? No, we won't, but but who cares? I, I don't I don't care. It's fun, this is what I wanted. Uh, it's Christmas time, and it feels like one of those adventures you watch around this time of the year. And, and everybody in grade one would be talking about it the next day. Back to Jude Law. I was looking forward to Jude Law, and obviously he didn't do much in the first two episodes. He was clearly the pirate at the very beginning, and then at the end, he was in, in prison with, with the kids, and and he uses the force, and Wim, our lead protagonist, I suppose, is Wim, he says, oh, you are a Jedi, and he goes, shh, can you keep a secret? Which is, of course, oh, we have a Jedi, and of course, all the speculation is that he is not a Jedi. But going into it, there's a lot of talk of he was going to be a different Jedi, a different type of Jedi, and they had conversations about what that could mean. Now, look, we've had Dark Jedi in the Ahsoka series, so if he's a Dark Jedi, why would they have conversations about that? If he's a Sith, why would they have conversations about that? He's just a Sith. If he's not a Sith, but he's just a bad guy, we just got the Acolyte with, with the stranger character, Kaimi or whatever his name is, why would you do that? Why would you have conversations about that? We've already had that. And if he's just a pure Jedi, then he's just a pure Jedi. I was kind of hoping he'd be a pirate Jedi. I think that's closer to along the lines of what we're getting. I'm still holding out that his lightsaber comes out of his pistol. That's really what I'm hoping. I'm hoping we get some Ezra callbacks on this one. This series, though, kind of reminded me of Rebels in a lot of ways in terms of the callbacks. We got a lot of callbacks to old Star Wars stuff, old Star Wars lore and characters and designs and whatnot that we haven't gotten forever, and they brought that into this series, and I really appreciated that and respected that. Uh, and, that, and that's what Star Wars really, you know, the nostalgia factor that Disney can't figure out, that's kind of what Star Wars is, right? It's coming up with this new idea, but surrounding it with all the, the familiarity of Star Wars around it, which is something that they kind of lost sight of. That part they lost track of, I thought. They lost sight of, of the surrounding being familiar, and they kind of went for too new. And it's like, well, don't go too new. Like, the story can be new, but the surroundings, the environments you know, Tatooine aside, they need to be familiar to stuff. I think Mandalorian kind of nailed that. I think Skeleton Crew is also nailing that. And that gets, gets, that gets me excited. But then, if, but Jude Law's character, once again, is this new kind of Jedi. And I'm starting to get suspicions. And as we go into episode three, I've only seen the first two episodes, but as we go into episode three, I'm starting to wonder, where are we going to go from here? What's the point of all this? And it's getting me thinking that Jula obviously has the Force. And I don't think, again, a new type of Jedi, he's not going to be, I can't remember the character's name from, from Obi-Wan Kenobi, Kamil Nanjiani's character, who is a fake Jedi. He's not going to be like that. He's not going to be a pretend Jedi. Because, again, we already had that, and this is a new type of thing. So why would you have a conversation? Anyway, so what, this is the point. As I go off in tangents, is he's a new type of Jedi. My suspicion is uh, a parent of his, a mother, father, probably a mother, was a Jedi. My guess is a relative, somebody around him was a Jedi, maybe a mother, father, he was born in secret perhaps. Somewhere along the line he has Jedi DNA, obviously, and he knows all about the Jedi, and he witnessed Order 66, but he was never 
a Jedi. He was never discovered to be force sensitive for what, whatever reason. And so he kind of, after he saw that, he got very cynical and found a life of piracy. And he could use his skills to help him become a pirate. And that was effective until they got the ship, which had absolutely no treasure on it, and then the mutiny. Now the question is, why would he stay locked up all these years or however long it's been we don't know what the time frame between what we saw and what it might be a day only but why would he allow that to happen if he is a jedi if he is force sensitive maybe he was hiding his abilities of course jedi were hunted for quite some time so maybe he hid his abilities from them but he used them to his advantage when he could in secrecy that's what i would suspect here is he was a secret jedi a secret force user not quite a jedi maybe he did his training maybe he left the order but I, I do feel like he witnessed Order 66 from an outsider's perspective and saw what happened, saw what happened to the Jedi. And he probably lost all faith in humanity at one point and decided to turn to a life of piracy. But I'm still suspecting that he was he was away from the Order. He was hidden from the Order on purpose. Maybe, like, like I said, if he was born in secrecy, perhaps if it was his mother was the Jedi, his father didn't trust the Jedi, didn't believe in the Jedi, and, and kind of like raised him away from it. But he saw from afar what happened, and he found out about what happened to his, uh, to his mother about Order 66 somewhere along the way. That's my suspicions on the character. Now, of course, I think also he is Long John Silver from Treasure Island. Not Treasure Planet, Disney fans, but Treasure Island. And I think, you know, he's going to befriend the kids. He's going to help the kids. We saw this in the trailer, right? He's going to help the kids befriend the kids. But his ultimate goal is to get the treasure on at Aden, their, their home world that nobody knows exists or nobody knows where it is. I think it's a myth, right? He knows that it is the, the, the planet of treasure, of eternal treasure. So that is his goal, right? His goal is going to go there to get that treasure to, so he can win back his crew, win back his ship and become the pirate once again. That's what I suspect this whole thing is. Now, at the very end of all of this, we don't know what's going to happen. But I have the sneaky suspicion that he is going to, you know, do away with the treasure, not need the treasure, and try to save the kids. And possibly even like Long John Silver, he might vanish. His his ending might be unknown, right? His his survival or death might be left a mystery up to the imagination. Is he still lurking in the world when we get Ahsoka season two, perhaps? Not I'm not saying he's in Ahsoka season two, but is he still alive when we get to the sequel trilogy, let's say? I think that's where we're going. I think he's going to be, so he was raised uh, using the Force, but hidden from the Jedi. Could be totally wrong. And if I am, I am also very much okay with this. But I do think he's going to be using the kids to get to their home world so that he can steal their treasure, to get their eternal treasure so he can win back his ship. Because he's all about money at this point for whatever reason. He's just a pirate. That's what they do. We might learn more. I might have a whole different idea on this guy next week after that episode. But I really like the first two episodes. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Who is Jod Nana? would and did you like the first two episodes but that's where i think we're heading with him i do like the ambiguous ending that he could possibly have that long john silver has that he could have a job none of what had i do i do i'll have my review after the episode this week and we'll have more discussions leading up to the weeks ahead i'm really enjoying the show it's a lot of fun i'm digging it it's kid adventure why not let's do it get on our bikes ride around town is that what kids still still do these days that's what i did when i was a kid it reminded me of that this reminded me of uh, weirdly enough, like you would go on adventures and you know you'd hope to see like a like a ship in the woods, like the flight of the navigator. You know, you're like, oh, where am I? You know, you get a treasure map and you'd go try to find pretend treasure when you're like five, six years old, and and that's what it was like back then. And you know, I think we've lost that in a lot of movies anyway nowadays. I love to see the imagination on these kids run wild, and I can't wait to see what adventure they get in, and I can't wait to learn more about Jod Nana Wood, former fake, not really Jedi. But maybe, because I just think if he was a Jedi and all that stuff, it's like, okay, this again, great. But having someone who was raised away from the Jedi, he was born in secret, or maybe born before, you know, maybe, who knows? But he was born away from, he was he was raised away from the Jedi, knew all about the Jedi, but was not allowed to be a Jedi. And he saw what happened to them and decided to use his, his abilities, the Force, for the betterment of, of his, his progression on the on his starships to become a captain who would eventually screw up <laughs> here we are let me know what you guys think in the comments down below thanks for watching everybody give us a like and a subscribe and until next time may the force of others be with you